Hello there, it's Steve Irwin here. Me and my partner Charles are going to show you around New York City. Now, it may seem like there's not much of an ecosystem here, but there's a large amount of diverse animal life. Now, if we're lucky, we might even get to see the Justin, a rare type of human. There's only one left in the world. Now, my partner Charles is now going to tell you some facts about New York City. Hi, my name is Charles. I'm from Columbia University, and I'm here for an internship. And I want to be an ecologist, but we're in New York City, and uh... The climate in New York City is temperate, which means changes between seasons are milder. The average tempera temperature of the winter is 40 degrees Fahrenheit. The average of the summer is 83 degrees. The summer is very humid. The average annual precipitation is 49.7 inches. Soil in Manhattan is mostly room and is very rocky. Most of it is compacted underneath the, all the buildings and streets. Okay, now that you know a little bit more about it, let's go find some of these animals. Crikey! What? What is it? Look, it's a rare type of pigeon. Steve, it's just a feral pigeon. They're common in urban areas. Alright, now for some animal facts about feral pigeons. The feral pigeon is common to urban areas. They can lay as much as six eggs a year. They're scavengers and they'll get food from the trash, off the street, and left over from humans. Feral pigeons usually have nests on man-made objects or trees. A bird spike is commonly used by building owners to keep them off of their buildings and other structures. Well, Some of the trees found in New York City are oak trees, laurel, mag magnolias, and sweet gum trees. Oaks produce wide broad leaves and produce fruit, which is a nut called the acorn. A sweet gum tree has five pointed leaves resembling a star and produces a fruit with spikes. Alright, we're just going through this urban area, just checking things out. And what's that? What's that? Crikey! It's a Justin! <laughs> Come on! Alright, we just momentarily lost the Justin on us, running from us after we spooked him. Now, to capture the Justin, we're gonna. We're gonna have to go get the tranquilizer because he's awfully quick and we don't know how he's going to react once we capture him. Go quickly! So we're gonna go get the tranquilizer, alright Charles? Yeah! Alright, now what I got here is a NAF tranquilizer end stop. And it, you can pick this up at any Kmart near you. And it, it's wonderful tranquilizer and will stop any animal dead in its tracks. I'm gonna get this all ready here. See, we can check the PSI right there. Quickly, wait! I think I see him behind that bush! Let's go! Shh, shh. Be quiet, Charles. Alright. He's momentarily distracted. I'm gonna go up to him. Be careful. Let's go. Got him! Alright. He's gonna momentarily twitch because the tranquilizer has an effect on him. It should weigh off in like five seconds, but. Nah, the Justin is a human. And because of humans encroaching on animals' areas, it has created what is called urban sprawl. And it has pushed the animals' habitats further away but driven some of the more dangerous animals closer to us. Predators such as coyotes have come closer to human environments for the reason of people's pets as they find them as a tasty treat. 
for their bellies. The presence of humans, also in animal habitats, has provided them with food out of dumpsters and trash bins. Due to human impact, there is also pollution in urban environments, which includes air, light, and water pollution. Water being contaminated from the chemicals of industrial sites can create defects on the surrounding animals that drink the water or eat organisms that live in it. Lights in a city at night disrupt the patterns of nocturnal animals like birds who rely on the moon and stars for navigation. The lights disorientate the birds, causing them to be confused and could circle around the bright lights until they become exhausted or crash into them. Now it's time for another amazing animal fact. This time it's on red-tailed hawks. One of the most common North American hawks is the red-tailed hawk. It's found in a wide range of habitats, but also dwell in urban areas. The red-tailed hawk is an apex predator, which means nothing else is a predator of this bird. It consumes small animals such as snakes, squirrels, mice, and bugs. Construction of light poles in urban areas gives the red-tailed hawk a place to perch on. Red-tailed hawks also make their nests in large trees, cliffs, and on man-made structures. Now, here's some pictures of the red-tailed hawk. Crikey, what a great example of a gray squirrel. Now, here's some animal facts on the gray squirrel. Gray squirrels are one of the more dominant species of squirrels in North America. It is a herbaceous scavenger and gathers large quantities of nuts and seeds. It also raids bird feeders for the seeds inside of them. Its joy is up high in trees and is made of twigs and dry leaves. Now here's some pictures of gray squirrels. Steve, thanks for this experience. It was great for my internship and now I can get my degree in ecology. Anytime, my friend. It was great to have you on the show. Well, this concludes today's episode of Ecosystems, the Urban Environment. Don't forget to join us next week as we look at the ocean ecosystem and find animals such as whales, manatees, and sea cows. Well, Boy!